free computers. Everyone seems to ask, where do I get my free computers from? I want some computers. Well, they're everywhere. Every business, every school, every home just about uses computers. And so, you know, I keep saying, just get out there and advertise and go and get your free computers and IT equipment and all that stuff. Don't get buried in um, street scrapping or um, dumpster diving for too long. You know, if you're resourceful enough to find good stuff out of dumpsters and stuff like that, well, you're probably resourceful enough to um, do a little bit of advertising and, you know, take it to the next step and start getting your own computers for free. And, you know, I've got more than enough e-waste at the moment to handle myself, but it just keeps coming. So get out there, guys. Advertise for computers um, or advertise for e-waste in general and and get out there and and pick up your own stuff uh, once again just keep encouraging people to um, you know to think a little bit higher than just picking up trash to um, you know start advertising for e-waste in your own area and you know at least pick up a few schools uh, a bunch of small businesses maybe a couple of larger businesses that on top of um picking up rubbish off the streets or whatever out of dumpsters um you'll find that you'll always be in scrap we've got these i don't know what they are but they're cord cord tube duos um bit bit rough but it just depends on what where you are and what country you're in because some places some countries you know it's it's a lot easier to sell secondhand computers and especially if you've got a little bit of time and a little bit of knowledge how to reformat and re-upload uh, your windows and all that sort of stuff get them up to uh, reconditioned uh, condition and yeah you can do okay that's all i wanted to uh, mention for now just um free computers and free IT equipment it's all out there you just gotta you know put in the groundwork and if you want to uh, you know there's so many new people coming into scrapping and uh, looking at doing this now or in the future but you know this might be something that you're interested in you're interested in computers and IT equipment so put in the groundwork now you know at least look into all your local laws how to start up a small business and you know start putting together some good advertisements uh, flyers and stuff like that maybe even build a website offline uh, and slowly build it you can get more e-waste than you'll ever imagine come back this particular pickup i haven't been to this these two schools for over 18 months and then bang out of the blue and mind you this is nothing compared to what i'm i'm going to pick up during the holidays when i go back there because they just don't have enough time um to uh to get out all the computers that they've got in storage so there's probably a couple of hundred pcs sitting there waiting for me to pick up in probably a few weeks time or whenever the school holidays start again uh they're going to call me and we're going to do the whole lot it might be two or three loads who knows so i'm expecting a couple of more schools in the next week or so it's just constant endless you know don't miss out and uh, don't let the bigger businesses monopolize on on the e-waste industry and take everything for their own profits um you know there's plenty out there for the one-man band that just wants to go out and pick up their own stuff and you know ensure in between when you've got nothing to do or you want to do a bit of a break you can do your dumpster diving or your street scrapping or wh how, whatever else you, you like to do. But um, this will keep you in work forever. So get out there, guys. Oh, g'day, scrappers. I'm heading out west today to do a couple of pickups. And uh, this one's uh, out of the blue. I just got called yesterday whilst I was in the middle of scrapping stuff out. And... Um, 
It's a, it's a school, well there's two schools, but this one I haven't, I haven't um, had a call from this technician for about 18 months. So um, yeah, I, I thought I lost this school, but um, and I'm actually expecting a couple other schools over this side of town to call me soon. Um, so yeah, just a bonus couple of pickups today. And well, you know, I'm, I'm getting down a little bit on scrap, so uh, so why not? I'll take it. Before you know it, unexpectedly, uh, you think, oh, okay, I'm gonna go easy for the next week and just slowly scrap. And before you know it, you get another call and you're out there doing it all again and filling up. But you know that's good because. Um, my e-waste recycling, it's still a part-time business, you know, I, I get as much, you know, any, any calls that I get, I take the jobs, no problem, even though I don't advertise to uh, try and get new clients, um, my old clients, you know, give me enough to uh, keep me going. So, it's a, a nice to uh, be able to come at this side of town because I'm over the west of Melbourne and so I'm heading west and it's only another five minutes up the road so it's, it's really good because I don't have to go through the city or through the main kind of peak traffic and uh, it's a really easy to access these schools so yeah pretty excited to get out there and um, have a look at what we get but yeah the first school I'm doing is a um, I think there's only about a quarter of a load and and then once I do that me and the uh, maintenance guy we're going to go to the second school which is kind of just around the corner and do the uh, yeah do the second one so I, I'm Yep, I'm on track. All right, so I'm not too far from the first school. Yeah, anyway, let's get up there and see what we get. Okay, well, I've done that first school. Um, wasn't anything spectacular. There is one really interesting little thing in there, so... Um, looks like it's going to be some nice circuit boards. But yeah, now we'll just go to the uh, next school if I can find my way through and hopefully it's got more PCs because I did get, I, I was hoping I wasn't going to get printers, I, I ended up getting a giant photocopier, you know, not the full size but uh, still big enough, bigger than I expected. So, gosh. I have no idea where I'm going. I'm going to get lost, I can see it. I've just got directions by by word. So, but um, yeah, hopefully we get some really nice stuff this time round. Uh, yeah, yeah, just got some boxes of stuff and oh, I've got a stereo system, uh, speakers and stuff. It's mostly just junk. Doesn't work. All right. Well, I think I'm. This is the road. So let's go and do this second school. Okay. Well, this school. I, I now remember this school. It's um. Have to go up the elevator to the next floor. So it's a really long process loading up stuff, going down. Um, I really need a cage trolley uh, for this because there's uh, always a, a lot of loose bits. So like monitors are really hard to carry. Okay, I'll get these PCs. Yeah, it's not easy doing this job um, at this school. 
because you've got to go through two buildings and the schoolyard and all kinds of things it's just a little bit complicated and getting through this elevator not to break any doors while I'm going through. Oh, that's one building, now I go through another building and out the front. <laughs> That's two trips, plus the other school. Uh, probably not going to be as big as I thought. Apparently, they weren't really prepared at this school to take, for me to come and take all the stuff today. So they've got a whole heap of PCs that are stashed away and they've got to get them all out. So I'm not going to get everything today. I'll just take what I can get. Trip number three. Let's do it. A lot more coming now. Well, there we go. <laughs> Whew, that was insane. I think I did five trips up and down the elevator. Oh, at least there's an elevator and it wasn't stairs, but... Um, Still, it all just takes, you know, takes a while to drag it all off. Um, it ended up being okay, not as many loose items as I thought there was going to be. Because the loose items just, especially monitors, um, because I don't do many pickups like I used to, and I'm not planning on doing, you know, any more than I'm doing now. So, it's probably not worth for me to uh, bother um, getting a, another trolley made up because uh, the one thing I didn't, you know, I was always meaning to do was to get a, a caged trolley but one that was um, uh, kind of like a kingfisher, you know, where they're, they're not too long or wide so you can get them into small elevators but um, high enough where you can fit, say, 20, 20 or 30 monitors because monitors are even these flat screen monitors are really awkward to take out of buildings um, especially if you you know I mean they they're so easy to drop they collapse and um, and then when you get to your van um, and you put your trolley down that's and go to open the van that's the time when the monitors collapse I've been in the city <laughs> in like people everywhere and come out of a building with a stack of monitors on my trolley put the trolley down to open the door and bang the whole lot just collapsed you know and it's happened a few times all over the footpath you know people are just looking at you saying god what's he doing let's get back to the workshop and see what we ended up getting is uh, probably uh, there's at least 20 PCs I think I've only got two or three laptops but yeah quite a lot of PCs so it's good and they're all good solid heavy PCs so they've got everything the hard drives everything complete this place um, isn't you know like they have a tech but it's just a different sort of system at this place so yeah it's really good all right let's go back so this is what we ended up getting from those two schools and what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to unload everything and have a little look at what we got, just do a bit of a count. A couple of interesting items in here. 
um, some junky stuff, but you know, as usual, you've got to take a little bit of the good and the bad, like uh, uh, toner cartridges. Um, but I've been really good here. I've got some nice empty space here where I can start stacking stuff temporarily until I work out what I want to put under cover and what I don't have to. I just scrapped out these PCs yesterday afternoon. Uh, so that's given me some nice room. Uh, still got some junk, obviously. Uh, so these PCs here, uh, 31, I think, oh, plus the these ones as well, they all came from the school that I did last week. So, you know, if you do just one school a week, you're, you're, you're overloaded with stuff, believe me. It's, uh, and uh, also the other day, you might have seen my last video, uh, I got rid of all my e-waste and I got fresh cages. Well, already, motherboards are already built up and I've actually got a whole bunch out in the back because um, I also buy motherboards as well as, as well as you know, get them from scrapping my own. So I'm already starting up a pile of motherboards and some mid-grade boards. Uh, I only had half a cage of mid-grade boards last time and it was 150 kilos. And that's only half a cage. So this cage fits quite a lot of um, mid-grade boards. And uh, just got something that I want to scrap out a little bit later. That's where I put my power supplies. Uh, usually two thirds of the cage is power supplies and two rows of hard drives. And these hard drives will, you know, be good if they stack up right up to the top. Still got my uh, surveillance stuff. And um, yeah, and so I've got uh, a lot more motherboards sort of scattered around everywhere that I need to just, uh, before I put them in the cage, I just make sure that um, they're ready to go. So these um, kind of motherboards that I buy, and I just make sure that they're, all the batteries have been taken out, you know, because I can miss a few, and uh, it's really important that every battery, so when people bring me motherboards to, um, to sell to me, you know, I've got to make sure that everyone's there. And then I might, you know, some motherboards, I'm, I might have a chip that I can pick off, but uh, most of these, I don't touch at all. I just let them go, maybe just take the crystal. Um, yeah, um, modern style motherboards don't really have much to take off uh, without noticing, you know. Um, you know, aside from, as I said, the crystals and um, see these little chips in here in the, in the little pop out thing well uh, yeah sometimes I take out those little ones you don't really notice them but uh, certainly don't touch the BGAs or anything like that for resale because um, they've got to get some value out of it uh, just quickly what else I wanted to mention oh yeah um, I'll just show you this little um, pile of CPUs I got the other day Um, we'll go over here. <laughs> so, yeah, I got a really nice little uh, batch of CPUs and um, these nice IBM gold caps, PR200s, bunch of them. But under here, if I can show you is about six, uh, oh no, oh, hang on, 3.3 kilos, so about seven pounds of just ceramic CPUs that has been crushed up, right? So they, I think the guy sort of watched the YouTube videos you know, you know how there's guys that are processing ceramic CPUs and then the first thing they do is they break them up like that, they crush them. Um, so that's what he's done, he's broken them all up and, um, and just left them like that. So, uh, so inside, you know, you got the, you know, it's crushed up, there's probably some little bits missing, but there's your gold bonding wires and all that. In in between and um, all the, oh, there's, you know, all kinds of things. There's pins dropped and, yeah, bits and pieces. So he's, he's 
Um, so seven pounds of, you know, really good, like uh, a lot of it is 486 CPUs. And uh, so that's an interesting batch. And also the, um, the gold caps, the ones that he hasn't broken like that, um, the ones on the other side from the, say so these ones here, I also got a bag of, um, um, uh, what do I get, bag of fingers with, as well as all these gold caps, so they're all there, um, so yeah, I don't know, I've just got to go through it, take out all the CPUs, and then, yeah, I suppose this is all just ready to go, you know, ready, you know, the first step of gold recovery, where they crush it all up like that. But um, obviously, I'd probably do even more um, if I was going to go for the gold recovery. But see all the really nice uh, gold bonding wires in there and the gold pins. So, yeah. Um, I'd rather that uh, the CPUs were complete like that because, you know, I like to put them in my collection, you know. There's a nice, interesting 386. Um, yeah, that's an AM386. That's a pretty good one. But, you know, that's okay. So look what he's done there. He's, you know, just smashed it up. It's, a, you know, just an IBM. So the gold cap, yeah, it's just sort of like, I don't know, you know, that looks really roughly smashed up. I don't know what the thinking was behind that. So I just, um, I bought all the CPUs uh, in their grades, but... Uh, this crumble, I just, uh, I paid uh, a fair, fair price for ceramic CPUs. So obviously there's a lot of 486s, but I didn't pay anywhere near 486 because what's 486, what's not, you know, uh, they would have got a lot more money or not a lot more, but a bit more money if they just left them intact. But, oh, well, that's what happens. Guys start they collect stuff like that they start you know they think that they're going to um go for the gold refining but they realize once they're towards the end of uh, accumulating stuff that you know they're never going to get to the gold refining stuff and this is what i try and say to all scrappers that aren't you know guaranteed to go into gold recovery themselves is you know, don't do this sort of stuff. Don't start smashing CPUs up because you've seen a YouTube video and that. Keep everything as it is until you're actually starting to really, re uh, you know, recover the gold yourself. But for 99% of people that are scrapping, um, gold recovery is not the way to go. They're not going to, they're not going to get to that stage because, you know, you don't want to just do you know there's no point in just doing a, a couple of pounds of uh, cpus and getting a, a few grams of gold it's not going to change your life so this is why i always you know suggest to people that are stockpiling is just to keep you know stockpiling components as they are as cpus and you know in a lot of cases you'll find that these some of these cpus can be really collectible you know and so you're much better off keeping them as they are and yeah you can always crush them up like this another time when you're ready to actually go but you can't put them back together if, if you if you uh, decide that you can't actually put them together um scrap them out so this is yeah it's all sort of really worn out the top here but i think this is a a small version of a pentium pro Maybe not, but it's an interesting one. Just a pity that it's all such in poor condition. It's all, all the pins are bent and scratched up. And, um, otherwise, I would have put it into my own collection rather than that. But yeah, I just thought that's an interesting thing um, to show you. And I better go out and start emptying this van. And um, yeah, I'm just uh, excited to have a look at what we got. And I can't wait for the the next pickup from this place because I reckon it's going to be well it's not going to be much junky stuff it's going to be a whole lot of just straight out PCs so awesome um, can't get enough PCs 
Obviously, I want all the RAM, the hard drives, the CPUs, the motherboards, the whole lot is going to be in there, so it's going to be really good. Let's take this out and have a look. Okay, well, there's my photocopier for today. It's only half size, so it's a bit more manageable. It's a sharp, very dusty. It's probably been in storage for a long time. That was from the first school I did. And here's our stuff that we got for today. So, okay, it wasn't too bad, actually. Um, as I mentioned, you know, there's a lot more to come at this school so um, I just got to wait for the for them to um, get it all out and ready for me uh, so I, you know the standard cables bags and boxes of cables that also came from the first school or just a you know an old stereo system um, might still work I'll check it out it's Panasonic still got the speakers and everything so yeah if it works I might put it in the workshop got me standard monitors again so it looks like about 14 monitors as well as a couple of uh, oh no just one CRT monitor but it's it's an IBM I might check it out and see if it works uh, if it cleans up I might put it in the IBM collection um, so the PCs 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24 PCs so about what I thought and um, yeah uh, a, a mixture of them and these are all it looks like unity so it's these are kind of like generic PCs that have been made up at one stage and so um, they've still got they got floppy drives uh, they're running this these are still like Windows XP so these are about the oldest PCs you get from schools today. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of different versions of these, these type, with the uh, floppy drives and stuff. Um, so they've got the Core 2 Duo inside. Uh, don't know what sort of CPUs, but um, yeah, hopefully they're green fibers or something, you know, a bit better value. And, and also these ones here, these look like the same kind of systems, just in a different tower. Um, probably look a little bit plainer but they're the same unity kind of brand so yeah this is just like a a, a computer shop that um, makes them up like this or or a small computer company that puts together pcs for, for places like schools but i did get some brand name ones uh dell's hp and I got a, another Lenovo Think Center, but I got two IBM Think Centers. So these ones are the ones I like, and um, I might open them up, blow them out, and um, if they're running, uh, I'll probably put these into my IBM collection as well. Um, these are the ones that I really like to keep. The, the, the Lenovo Think Centers, they're the Chinese version. So I'm not sure whether these ones were, these are still probably made in China. Yeah, the Pentium 4, Windows XP. So, but with the IBM, if they're good, I like to keep a couple of them. I've probably got a, quite a few anyway. So I'll just have to check them out. The best PC I got is this Compact Desktop Pro, or Desk Pro. Really old school one. Really cool. Um, haven't you know you don't get many of these old PCs anymore especially from schools so this one's obviously been uh, sitting around in the storage for a long time I want to check this one out it's got a few slot cards it's running Windows NT Windows 98 so really cool and it's got a Pentium 2 so really cool uh, so it's a it would be a slot CPU Pentium 2 so yeah nice to still get some of these old ones from time to time got this HP switch it's got one of the modules been taken out but um, there's some good boards in there um, always get high grade boards in there here's another module there we should be good for gold recovery so that's a really good item um, you know as far as value you know these I value probably um, 
probably at least three times more than a PC coming from a school, um, if not more. If it had the other module, it'd be four times as much. But I love that. Uh, box of keyboards and junk. I got a little TV, didn't really need. Some speakers, knickknacks. Another one of these Cisco's, see what I mean? Every school I always get one, at least one of these Cisco's uh, things and uh, looks like just uh, some cable and stuff. Got two laptops, these old HP's, really old now, so uh, just for scrap. Just more cable and stuff like that. Um, yeah, nothing special there. Um, got a whole big box of these these Mimeo cables so they're using this Mimeo thing and these look like just um, just excess cables but it says here for Mac OS 10.2 or later so um, okay so because they're um, new in packaging these might be uh, worth selling just comes with this loose little uh, thing. I don't think I need to use this to sell sell these, but they're a really long cable running around. And it's just, yeah, just got like USB kind of ports. So um, I'll have to open up one of these packets and uh, read up what this was, you know, used for and whether it's... I'm hoping that they're uh, sellable items, you know, like because they're new in packet, it's really easy to sell and um, yeah, so that's a bonus if they can sell, if not, I'm just going to have to recycle the packaging, you know, the plastic and the cardboard and uh, and then scrap the, the actual wires, but I'll definitely keep some and hopefully, so this is also, this was probably the junky part of the pickup um, I really didn't want this I probably wouldn't have taken it if I seen what it was but these are what it is the Mimeo wireless link virtual link but all that's in them so this obviously yeah it's for the uh, laptops and I think it, it connects to the it looks like it connects to a whiteboard interactive whiteboard yeah so it's uh, each student gets one for their for their laptop or something but see it's just packaging material and all that's in it is just this usb link so most of the stuff um has been taken out so they're using everything but they didn't need these usb uh, these usb links so they're probably using wi-fi or something like that so that's all that's in them just that and there's really nothing inside they're probably just a tiny little circuit board um, and more plastic than it's worth so yeah I would have preferred not to um, not to get this box but that's just how it goes sometimes you do get some rubbish um, so it's all just these boxes with those little things so yeah sometimes you know that's just how it goes all I'm going to do is I'm going to take out those little things and see if I can scrap them out and then put all the boxes back in here and send it off to cardboard recycling um, and uh, yeah, and also I've got a, another switch, a 3Com switch, which is a really good one. Good, for, you know, obviously they've got good circuit boards, so good for gold recovery. But I've got this thing here, and I'm not really sure what it is. It kind of looks like a UPS, but it's not. It has got a couple of lead acid batteries inside. Um, and it obviously connects to something. It's got, okay, so three... Um, sort of like COM ports, uh, LCD, don't know, and then um, three slots there. Um, not really sure what it might be still like a UPS. I'm not sure, no, it can't be because I'll show you the other side. It, the uh, side cover is missing, but it kind of looks like a little, you know, a little switch box or a little server box or something. and it's got all these uh, cards in there. The cards aren't really high grade. I think this one is the best. It's like the the actual motherboard. Um, so uh, yeah, nothing really special here. 
um, but still okay. And then we've got these double boards that look like they've got a lot of little uh, transformers and stuff. So it's more um, like a power module. It's some kind of power thing, like a UPS. I don't know. So it has got two really nice little small lead acid batteries. Bit of connection here, power on and off. So yeah, it's some kind of power system for something. Uh, there's another board there. Uh, nothing spectacular, you know, got some tanties, got some uh, crystal oscillators, BGA there. Uh, not, a, not a great deal, but still, it's an interesting piece and, yeah, some interesting, at least we've got some, you know, circuit boards that we can uh, get something from, some batteries and stuff, but uh, that's it, guys. So that was uh, the uh, two schools. Uh, one's a really small, little quick one, where I got that really big photocopier, and this stereo system, so uh, quite low value in the first school, but that's only a very small one. I didn't expect much there. I do have a lot of cables and got some loose hard drives and stuff like that I've got to go through. Monitors I'll deal with, I'll probably just send them straight to my buyer. I'll scrap out the CRT if it's not working, otherwise I, I might keep it. Oh, I've got a little laser printer there, so they're all right, just a little HP. Um, yeah. But uh, what did I say, about 24 PCs. Um, these are just, you know, generic, but they're very heavy little PCs, so everything's going to be inside them. They're going to be pretty good. Um, uh, quite happy with this HP switch, and obviously the best thing is this compact Desk Pro Pentium 2 <laughs> Windows 98. Really cool old vintage system. Yeah, all right, guys, well, there you go. Another school down and um hopefully a few more to come really soon i'm expecting a couple more schools to call me and that shouldn't be too long and um but i hope to you know get through some of this before that happens and then this school the main school that i was at with the elevator <laughs> that's um it's going to be a really big job at come school holidays so it should be good and even better that it's school holidays so I don't have to worry about any students running around and stuff like that. All right, school number one last week, school number two this week. Let's see what next week brings us. Catch you next time, guys.